Welcome data enthusiasts. I'm Joseph of Zuma Recruitment, the consultancy focused 100% on connecting data professionals in and around the Berlin region. And this is our podcast, Data for Good, connecting you with all things data. Today, we're joined by Felix Kramer, AKA Homer Simpson. Uh, Felix is head of data and analytics at Ha Hotels. Com. The Ha Hotels Group is one of the largest hotel operators in Germany and also operates in Switzerland, Austria, uh, Hungary, uh, as well as Germany. Felix, how's it going with you today? Thanks, I'm very well. And I have the pleasure to be here to join you. Fantastic, fantastic. And props to you on the background. Yeah, <laughs> very colourful and characterful. What, what was the inspiration behind this? Well, um, it started, I guess, three years ago when uh, the C thing hit us. And when we all moved to our offices at home or bedrooms or kitchens, and I saw there, there need to be a bit more colour and a bit more fun in this new um unreal reality and um yeah it, it still remains because every time if i uh, i meet somebody new um the yeah. feedback is quite good so it's always uh, a bottle opener therefore i, I, yeah. will, I will stick to it the bottle opener the icebreaker i like that yeah. phrase and uh, yeah i would certainly agree you make my background look very underwhelming <laughs> But with that aside, let's get to it. I understand today uh, a really interesting topic. Um, we will be talking about the competitive advantages of investing in an internal data infrastructure. Tell me more about this. Give, give us some context. Obviously, you come from the hospitality domain. So yeah, why is this important to you and what's the context? Yeah, thank you. Well, we decided a couple of years ago um, as a mainly people business, because we are selling mm -hmm. hotel rooms to hotel guests. And most of our uh, 2000 employees are working um, in front of the guests directly. And part of them uh, are within administrative uh, departments and supporting that operational business. And um, we thought, well, uh, there, there, there need to, or well, there, there, there could be more insight than we, uh, than we have right now, and we decided to have something like a sub department within revenue management to just create reportings, etc. And that's how it started. And uh, over the couple of years, we identified that we cannot only create reportings for for colleagues to see how they are benching benchmarking in in regards to other other regions within the company but we was able to to inc improve processes in terms of forecasting budgeting have some automation in in manual tasks what they did every day and um, mm -hmm. due to the fact that we were created as a sub department that wasn't really heard by the rest of the company in, in the first mm -hmm. stage because it was siloed. And mm -hmm. um, during the pandemic, we uh, were in Kurzarbeit most of the time and some colleagues were uh, within 100% Kurzarbeit. That means that they have not to work at all and uh, the rest was yeah, uh, taking something like 50%. And therefore, we, we took over some, some tasks from different departments in, in that regard to um, yes, support with information for, uh, for, for stakeholders, et cetera. And then they saw, well, um, there's quite an, an impactful sub-department there. They could help us. And now, if we're looking uh, in, 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 into this year, we uh, almost involved in in or we are involved in very many uh, processes spread over the complete company and try to help them with insights with proper reporting with 
uh, reporting with, which based always on the same data set, which is always looking good if they share that out uh, externally. And um, we, we offer them the opportunity to, to get an uh, improvement of their processes as we did. And we do that for, for HR, for accounting, for controlling, to just um, get in, in, in contact with the, with the user or with, with the colleague who has a repeated task. And we just discuss what should be done that your task or your work is getting easier. Or how can we support you with scripting uh, to, to make it faster or make it less uh, less uh, failure um, um, that you make less failure within your work. And now we, we started something like a, a pilot campaign that we um, uh, we named that uh, Python democratization that we um, started to share our Jupyter notebooks, which we used internally in our in our department. And uh, just make a bit more documentation around ourselves and give it back to the business user itself. Let IT install the uh, interpreter. And oh, sorry, my daughter is, is crying. Just one second, please. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Sorry. No problem. Um, Felix, get, let's go back a, a little bit because you've already given us a lot of information. One go there. Kurzarbeit for our non-German speakers, I believe refers to a furlough scheme or a scheme in which employees are supported financially for not working. And we had this scheme, particularly during the pandemic. Okay, it's, it's great. It seems that although the, the, the big C, as you referred to it, uh, was was not a positive time, especially for the hospitality industry. It, it spurred the evolution of data analytics within your uh, company group. And you'd mentioned a couple of stakeholder groups being HR and accounting. Given that the hotel domain is a, a physical service domain, who are the main and all of the stakeholders who can benefit from using data analytics on a daily basis? Well, first of all, of course, everybody within the commercial departments, that's where we initially came from, because um, due to the fact that they use most of the available tools for demand forecasting, for benchmarking, etc., cetera, um, they have the biggest advantage of, of having someone internally they, they can call and ask, well, I have that problem, I can't do that, I don't understand it, and we can do some on the jobs. But as well with an operation where we have yeah, most employees, as I said, um, we can, or we, we provide them with something like maintenance statistics that we can say, well, uh, those rooms are very, unusual often out of order because of broken shower for for example and then the maintenance team at the property can review the initial setup in that room and say well yeah there was something else which caused that broken shower and uh, they can replace it and we can fix that for the long run so um, hmm. what we recognize is that there were um, a lot of use cases which we, we, we weren't expecting at the beginning, um, they, they, they developed itself because uh, as soon as they, got the or as they got the information, well, there is someone who can, who can support us, who can do other things we, we, we're doing right now, then mm -hmm. they, they create ideas on their own and therefore that, that whole uh, responsibility of our department grows on, it, on its own. And of course, especially due to the pandemic, where we had those uh, inter-department uh, task exchange, uh, that was a, a driver for that. And we, we see that 
um, having the ability to uh, have very close communication to our employees, regardless if it's operational or if it's commercial, if it's sales, uh, you can way better understand their needs if you have a face-to-face -face communication and they can show what they're doing. And you can say, well, I know we have that, that, that data source, we can automate that. And we had something mm -hmm. like that for, for our corporate sales. They're doing uh, quarterly statistics and they always had to do that manually. And now we, we just discussed the, the Excel sheet where they put the information in. And during that, that discussion, you recognize that they always sort in, well, could you create a list where we can copy that and put it into here? In, in our spreadsheet. And I said, well, let's just think about building the complete report, the complete spreadsheet within our BI. And then you only have to access the dashboard and you get all the information for all your colleagues and all your data for that period of time. Mm -hmm. And that changed the mindset within our company dramatically because they can see that, that the, the pace of improvement of processes is way faster than before and with that you will get almost every buy-in if you need mm -hmm. if you can prove that your performance and your pace in changing something is way better than before mm -hmm. and and just to clarify it might seem like an obvious question <laughs> Given, given the international uh, perspective of the hospitality industry and her hotel group, all your data is owned internally and managed on internal data infrastructure. Is that right? Mm, no, it's it's different because we we work with a centralized property management system, and that's okay. uh, hosted or that's provided by Oracle and hosted in a data center in Frankfurt. Then we have a revenue management system, which comes from the US. Uh, we have a benchmark system, which comes from the US. So there are different um, external systems from you know, all over the world due to the, due to the fact that you always try to find the best player on the market and you can select from yeah. wherever you would like. And does that kind of paradigm of data infrastructure, does it suit your business's needs optimally or in an ideal world, would you have it differently? I guess it's both of it because um, taking the example of our revenue management system, um, yes. many parts of that system we weren't able to do on our own or in the same um, same speed or same accuracy. Um, therefore, we, we purchase that, that system. But there are some parts within that system which are not that satisfying us uh, in, in our daily work. And normally, you could just raise a request for development and then they rank it. And if there are many others uh, um, just counting on your request for development, then it comes to the roadmap and maybe you will get an adjusted system. What we did in our case, it's regarding the um, forecasting of group business, which is for a global company, very hard to have a group forecast for very different kinds of customers because group business in hospitality is very unique for each hotel or for each uh, branch of hotels within a group. And, I imagine uh, they have... regional differences, sure. um, even the structure of the, of the building. And even um, the kind of how the employees are inputting that data within your PMS mm -hmm. makes a difference because at the one company, they say, well, as soon as the contract is signed, we put that to definite. And then we know, well, lead time for definite business is 90 days. In mm. other companies, maybe they say, well, we put it to definite as soon as the customer is not able to cancel that group. Means their lead time is not 90 days like ours, even if it's the same request, 
but they put it to definite 28 days before arrival. And that, of course, makes strategical differences if you review that data. And therefore, we, we created a little simple algorithm, which is just creating every day for all our groups, for all our hotels, for one year and all segments, our main KPIs we need to input into the system to, to receive a proper group forecast. And um, we now are finalizing the, the one-way interface from us to them, mm -hmm. that they can process the data every day. And we expect that we will have a better base pricing because our occupancy is higher in advance because we already can show what we expect in group business in 180 days. Mm -hmm. And of course, that makes a difference. Uh, if I'm saying mm -hmm. I expect 200 rooms of my 500 rooms being group business, or uh, I will sell all 500 rooms individually through booking.com. So um, mm -hmm. that is something where we see that is an advantage because we can do that on our own. We can try and we can see if it's working or we can fail and then we can do something else. But at least we we have the ability to optimize our own um, our own strategy and try mm -hmm. to work closely with those partners to say, well, we we have those plans. Let's see how that works together, and maybe that is a good point for all for other customers of you. Uh, maybe they can adapt that on their end too to just make make that part of the of the platform better for for many. Okay, you, you've mentioned booking.com and I, I think it'd be wise to uh, at least go into that in a moment. I, I'm wondering, um, as you mentioned, optimization a fair bit, whether it be across AI or ML or analytics and reporting, you've, you mentioned a lot, or engineering, what has been the most, the single most impactful data tweak data change that you've made that's helped the business in recent times good question <laughs> well it, it seems that you you you're addressing um hotel performance optimization on many fronts by harnessing and utilizing the power of data i wonder if you've seen a big impact in a certain area over another area when we when we switched our our pricing strategies and our distribution strategies from manual to autopilot and auto distribution, that was main uh, driver for improvements in 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 our sale, because uh, before we we had something like channel manager and we put in rates and they revenue management decide, well, we have to change rate here, we have to change rate there, and then they spread it to the world. And now, mm. due to the fact that we have a very uh, good configured uh, revenue management system, we can um, take the autopilot functionality and it calculates the, uh, the selling rates or the OTA rates for online travel agencies like booking.com four, uh, four times a day. And then it will be automatically distributed through our PMS, property management system, to general manager and then spread to all, uh, re uh, all retail channels out there. And mm -hmm. um, we made an improvement in, in regards to speed. So, um, Prior to that, we, we need something like 20 minutes to change rates. Now it's something like um, happening between uh, 30 and 90 seconds that we can change rates for, for many days for the complete year for, for, for more than, more than uh, 10 properties each. So yeah. um, I guess to have the ability to increase the performance of your of your um, processes, have um, partners which support you in regards to, to distribution or interfacing 
because that was one of the most impactful that we had a two-way interface between our PMS system and the revenue management system to have a sync between our availability that we are not overselling our properties on hot days and um, yeah to have that covered by by a, by a by a software is way better than do that manually and that was yeah. something we did uh, a lot before we invested in that in that software yeah yeah you, you've mentioned revenue management and of course that lead it, um optimizing those systems uh leading to better occupancy and demand planning i wonder how the better use of data analytics has improved customer experience across your hotels or has that been a focus i'm sure it has what's important for us um, is especially to have our or if we address to a normal customer on booking.com for example it's very important that we have uh, a well position between price and review index mm -hmm. for example if we compare with different uh different hotels in our in our area and we we do something like a, a price review matrix to see where we are located and if there are properties which are way better ranked but they are selling to less price then we will lose business to them because most of the time a customer decides based on price and then look I have a budget of 100 euro and there's a property with 9.2 rating uh, versus 8.7, then I, I would choose the 9.2. And that's where we um, where we also investing in into internal um, um, online reputation departments, which are just um, yeah, consuming our statistics we, we create from our review um review partner who's who's collecting those feedback for us and uh, they are planning actions on that they they speak to the hotel managers and see if there are some uh some um, negative feedbacks which we have to react on and uh, how we can improve and that's something which we um which we started in in groups as well after the pandemic that we just um, read all um, cancellation comments which were inputted into the system by our colleagues and just counted words out of those um, uh, cancellation comments to see if there are any peaks in bad location or unfriendliness or whatever to just identify those properties where we have special needs and improve them um, mm -hmm. proactively. Mm. Have you seen properties transform the way they operate off of the back of uh, you know the the output of the analytics? That yes, generated? definitely. Definitely. Because without without naming a place, can you give me an area of, of operations that might have changed as a result of what you've been able to reveal through analytics? Yeah, we, we, we see that, especially in regards to what kind of outlet we offer to the guests. So if there's a bar, if there's a restaurant, if there's a fine dining restaurant, if there's conference space or whatever um, non-room uh, offerings and due to comparison of the performance of each profit center that has had impact on on the service level of, of uh, each individual property because of course if we can see that uh, the um, the revenue and costs of, of one profit center, like a uh, fine dining restaurant, uh, is, is not bringing that that um, yeah that profit we expect from from an outlet like that. Then we close that outlet and we just move the stuff to areas where we can make more uh, more impact with them. 
And I guess that is one of the major uh, points where it has impact on physical um, spaces within the within the properties, and of course for for the uh, employees working in that uh, in that outlet. But um, if you can uh, if you can create a decision based on that fact that your 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 meeting space is is used that much less compared to three years ago, then you may have to decide, well, maybe there is a competition which which took all that business and we don't have the power to get it back. Then we have to better close that that conference center down and uh, do something else with that space, maybe do some shared workspace in, in those meeting rooms or something like that to offer some different, more modern services to, to the community. You, we did, and you've mentioned booking.com a couple of times. I should imagine to hotel chains and independent businesses, large and small, uh, booking.com features quite heavily in their revenue generation. I, I wonder how how much booking.com is is integral to your data strategy moving forward. Well, I guess due to the fact that booking.com has a, a huge impact on individual travel, of course, they try to always find new ways to to build a better relationship to their customers and sometimes to the hotels as well, but mainly to the customers. They started to um, find new ways to get refunds to the customer in case of, uh, let's say, the customer has to cancel a booking. And they just implemented those strategies on their end and they said to the guests, well, you can cancel and you don't have to pay the fee because we will take care to find someone else replacing your booking. But that's something what we didn't agree to. And we found out because we read the comments within our reservations, because we just were investigating in a different part of uh, a, a different uh, issue. And then we saw, well, look at that comment that's popping up that much in our in our time frame and we counted those comments and we saw that peak starting at a given date and coming more and more and we just drill into that uh, dimension of those uh, comments and saw this information that booking.com has replaced the guest with another guest and therefore the initial guest has not to pay his cancellation fee and mm -hmm. that is impacting, of course, our, our strategy, how we work with booking.com, because we then uh, ask them to just stop that initiative for our company. But we, if we wouldn't have that internal department, we may have never seen that change of selling strategy of booking.com. And that's impacting us because we have not the same cancellation ratios as before, they are changing because they are getting less, then we are not getting any more late cancellation fees, which we expect from that channel because they are replacing with different guests. And mm. of course, if we could not sell the room again, then for us, it's important to, to charge the guest. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's one example for, for booking.com, especially where we where we just found something out and we could react on that. And we may would not be able to do that if we yeah, weren't in no. the position that we digged for that. Okay. It doesn't sound like booking.com is uh is proving to be advantageous to you from an analytics perspective. Um that, that much I can gather. Um, I, I wonder, as you've gone on this data journey, Felix, you've mentioned some of the really great outcomes of, of the business adopting um, data analytics in every in every form or various departments, at least. How about the challenges? What's the adoption challenges been like for, for stakeholders and for the business uh, generally? I guess the biggest point is 
changing the mindset if if you're coming from an industry which is not data driven itself because it it's hospitality or uh, car production or whatever mm -hmm. all those employees which are with the company more than three years and they are older than 25 they may have learned something different and they have different exp uh, experiences and they sometimes did that always on that manner and they are um they they need a lot of education and a lot of of training to change their mindset that it's getting easier and getting better if we move manual tasks or or um, manual processes to to automation or that we need to trust uh, systems which are offering um, machine learning algorithms to to uh, yeah, to support on given issues, and yeah. that's something what you can see with 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 our company in, yeah. in particular. I, I I guess to trust recommendation and prediction systems as well would be quite challenging for a worker who has for a long time developed an intu intuitive skill on how to operate within their um, area of a hotel. Okay, so a mindset shift. Yeah, that's I can imagine that's been huge. Um, as we kind of round up uh, the conversation, I wonder, looking forward, what might be the future possibilities of data analytics, particularly for the Ha Hotels group, but hospitality, generally speaking, there are two parts. One part is more on the commercial edge, because if we um, improve our our investments and initiatives in becoming smarter in uh, those tools we are purchasing and uh, using um, the uh, the innovation of of partners which are um, which comes out of new technology and we adapt that and we we really work with those new uh, features that will give us a commercial advantage that we uh, are way ahead of, of the competition in regards to what's going on in our business. And on the other hand, what I guess is more important is that we achieve something like a uh, uh an understanding that even mm -hmm. in a company like ours which is selling hotel rooms to to hotel guests that it's really important that every employee is literated in data and mm -hmm. uh, understands the importance of that because i i i had some uh presentation on a, on a conference last year where i showed that if you if you start in one department and and show them how they can improve their work uh with uh, maybe simply using a jupyter notebook where they can automate one single task every day and they then they they see that and they do that and they they're getting proud about that past the work they did and they can tell to their peers well i did that what i did all the days uh, uh, before, I, I, it took me ages, and now I just put that button, and then it's just happening, and I do that on my own, and I'm proud about that. And then they are talking to their to their colleagues, and it's just spreading through the departments. And you can, if you then have the ability to act on that and talk to those new um, interested colleagues, which say, "Well, I have some use case here." Could we find something similar to the person X by that? And if you just support them in in improving their work, then that will grow, and you will get these mindset of being more efficient, more digital in your company, and that will, yeah, that has something like a pulse because if it's your employees, uh, if you if the mindset of your employees is changing, they will. Trans, yeah, transport that to everybody else, and then you will 
increase the efficiency of your and the productivity of your of your company in the long run. I like this, uh, and I like this general approach as well. Using evidence to further educate and promote that mindset shift, and also allowing your your people to see the benefits of it, ha having a, a domino or a pulse effect, as you say. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's so easy. It's so easy because we do that as well. And why don't share that something like power to do your work faster and easier to all others? Because there's one aspect we didn't spoke about right now is that um, if you look at the university right now, those students, they are being taught not how to use Excel. They are being taught how to use R or Python to analyze their data and how to read a CSV file and get the information out of it. And if they enter the workforce, they will do that what they have learned in their new positions. And if they are competing with someone else who's doing the same task since 20 years manually, they will kill his job if he or her mindset hasn't changed until then. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's something what I what I tell them if I'm talking to them internally, that there is a change in in work life and there there will be other colleagues coming to the company with with different abilities and they can do some tasks better and faster, especially for repeating tasks. And I try to prepare our colleagues to for that period of time that they at least have heard about it and say well it's really cool what you're doing maybe you can share that with me that i can do that as well and not being afraid of 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 being here that there's someone else coming to the company who can uh, mm. automate his work on on his own and then took their jobs so to, to mm -hmm. just prepare them for that time. And of course, use their productivity they could have if they use scripting languages for their manual task. That's one of the, of the main duties for the next couple of years, I would say. And that would help many companies regardless of their, of their industry because productivity in the end is that what we need to improve to be more more have more profit and uh, uh, better results in the end. Mm. Mm. Thanks for sharing that. I see there's a, a balance that has to be made. The, the world is moving forward with analytics and the, the power of analytics, but the hospitality industry is in, in every facet. It's a, uh, it's a physical service and it's a, all about the people experience you know, or, you know provided by people um so yeah there, there's a balance that has to be struck there i'm sure hmm. yeah and sometimes i have the feeling that especially data and tech companies sometimes are are not focusing that much on the fact that not every not every industry is that far in in that roadmap in uh, with data as uh, a tech or data company itself are. So there's a lot of uh, improvement in, in regards to those people and processes, and uh, that's where we will work on. Felix, thanks very much for your time today. Thanks for being here. And see you all next time.